We'll go to the income by customer summary. Let's open that one up and check it out. I'm gonna change the range up top from 010122, tap 123122 and run it to refresh it. And there we have it. We've got our we've got our customers on the left hand side. We've got the the income by customer. So if we scroll on down, that comes out to the uh, 10 to 80, 05. If I go back to my income statement and look at the income side, that's not the income statement. The income statements over here and the income 10 200. So it's pretty close, not exact on it. And notice oftentimes you might be a little bit off or it's more likely that there's going to be a difference between this income report and the sub ledgers over here because QuickBooks doesn't force you to to use the system in such a way that the sub ledger will turn out uh, correct every time like it does with other accounts so for example if i go back to the first tab and i look at this balance sheet account of accounts receivable you'll recall we found a accounts receivable aging report which tied out exactly to this number that will typically be the case because quickbooks will not allow you typically record something to an accounts receivable account without assigning a customer in such a way that quickbooks can then make the sub ledger uh, tie out to it and that's quite nice because with this particular account that's very important although it does cause problems as we'll see when we're doing adjusting entries when we don't really want that to be the case the same is not the true not the same or it's not the same if you go over to the income line items meaning if you were to record something to income with it with a journal entry or with a deposit form as you might do if you were recording with the bank feeds then you might not assign a customer in the same fashion that quickbooks can then add it to the sub ledger so that's why it's more likely that your income account will be off than your sub ledger but if you're recording all of your income with the sales forms invoices and sales receipts and assigning a customer to it it should be tied out it should be correct also note if there is a problem with this one it's not as big an issue as it is if there's an issue on the balance sheet side of things with accounts receivable or accounts payable because these are temporary accounts so at the end of the year they're going to close out and you'll start over again with a zero at the beginning so if you if you got out of whack somewhere it'll reset itself at least on a yearly basis so you can get back in alignment and move forward from that point in time okay so if i go back on over then it gives us our expenses which are typically going to be the cost of goods sold here now sometimes you might have a more complex kind of job cost system where, where it might be something different than that but now it's got the expenses and then you've got the the net income which isn't it's a little deceptive of a term because it doesn't tie out to the bottom line of net income but this is the impact on net income of these transactions or gross profit in essence so that nine six eight three forty one you would think would tie out to basically gross profit in this case i went to the wrong report again which would be income minus the cost of goods sold or in other words that 405 you would think would tie out to this number it's a little off it's a little different because of the, some of the issues we just talked about so that's one of the two uh, kind of sub ledger reports notice how nicely you can you can create bar charts you can imagine and we will do in future presentations to use this data to create like a pie chart of who your best customers are who you sold to the most to and that kind of stuff to kind of spice up your the vi visuals on your reporting possibly for month end reporting and quarter end and year end 